Gary was the life of the party. In 2003, just a few years after graduating from Michigan University, Gary Lichtenstein was diagnosed with glioblastoma, stage 4 brain cancer. To be able to be 24 years old and to face that kind of diagnosis was... And he was so brave, and he made us believe that he was going to be alive for forever. He was going to live forever. So when he passed away, it took us all by surprise. When Gary was undergoing treatment, his family promised him they'd find a cure. They plan to keep their promise. That is why the Lichtenstein family founded Voices Against Brain Cancer. We decided that it wasn't going to be about only Gary Lichtenstein. Uh, we decided that it was going to be about the rest of the families out there uh, in the world, and that's the reason why we call it Voices Against Brain Cancer. Darren Latimer, a father of two with a third on the way, is among those who have turned to VABC for support. He's been treated for a malignant brain tumor and is now a board member. There's a real chance to put 10, 20, 30, 50 years on people's lives by what these guys are doing. And they're just so spirited. David Bailey is a father, a brain tumor survivor, and a board member. When he was diagnosed with glioblastoma, doctors told him he only had months to live. That was 12 years ago. So I had this long talk with God, and I got mad. And if, I mean, if it had been a movie, the camera would have gone into slow motion. And I, I literally, my hands went to fists, and the tears were falling down, and I'm walking down the road, and I shook my fist at the sky, and I screamed out the question, why me? one everybody asks and uh, and a weird thing happened I, I actually imagined that God showed up that pivotal moment changed David's perspective it propelled him to leave corporate America and become a musician since then he's released 15 albums and toured in 40 states his music is about faith hope dreams and courage positive stuff as David puts it you might have years of tears behind you but right now you got one more day, one more day. You can hold your children, or your brother, or your sister, or your wife. One more day, you can watch the grass grow. One more day, you can live your life. A few years ago, Jessica Henderson Chen went to her doctor complaining of deja vu. The suggestion of get an MRI was told to me the first thing I said was, I, I can't be a tumor, I, I can't have cancer because I have two little boys and they need me. It turned out Jessica, who is a doctor herself, had a malignant grade 3 brain tumor. Since then, she's had to have three brain surgeries. I remember, am I going to be able to talk? Am I going to be able to remember my family? Will I know I love my children? Am I going to be able to walk? Am I going to, you know, what if I'm not me? All my scans have been clear and I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. And the thought of having my skull cut open for eight hours was daunting, at the very least. Michael Burkhart also underwent brain surgery and is feeling pretty lucky these days. In 2007, following extreme headaches, blurred vision, and impaired hearing, Michael's wife Eden took him to the ER, where he was diagnosed with a form of pediatric cancer called medulloblastoma. After surgery and radiation, his scans are looking good. I don't think I'm out of the woods, but I'm living right now as if the woods didn't exist. For Michael, Jessica, David, Darren, and the thousands of other brain tumor patients, there is good reason to be optimistic. Brain tumor research is finally getting the attention it deserves, thanks in part to VABC and other charitable organizations. We're seeing a whole host of new drugs that were not even thought about five years ago. That pipeline will continue and we expect every six months new drugs are coming along now to change the, the way we treat this disease. VABC is currently funding some of the cutting edge research underway at Columbia University Medical Center, New York Presbyterian Hospital's Brain Tumor Center. Next year it will fund research at New York Presbyterian's Cornell campus. It will continue to support Northwestern University's Young Investigators program, which encourages medical students to study brain tumors. The ABC is expanding that program to the universities of Miami and Michigan, as well as Columbia and Cornell. I think these are 
more devastating tumors because they affect the very essence of what it is to be human. Thought, feeling, uh, planning, intelligence. VABC also funds programs that directly help patients and caregivers. The Raise Your Voice program distributes comprehensive guides to help those who are newly diagnosed. And VABC also started the first of its kind caregiver support group in Manhattan. The support VABC offers is what attracted some to become active. Initially you can feel very alone and what you don't realize is that there's so many other people out there going through it. And Voices Against Brain Cancer is such an amazing organization. I mean, I feel that from the meetings that I've been to, uh, everyone is so charged and excited to do something great for others and to help people. Paige Norton is carrying the torch for her late fiancé, Pete Philbrick, who literally carried the Olympic torch in December 2001 while undergoing treatment for glioblastoma near Boston. It would occur to us from time to time that not everybody was that lucky to have access to the resources that we did. And um, when I moved to New York a couple years ago, I found out that actually there weren't a lot of support groups here. And this being a city of 8 million people, it blew my mind. And I, I just wanted to become a part of something that would help other people have access to what we had. Access, support, a feeling of community, and the ultimate goal, a cure. I hope our foundation one day is put out of business. That's our goal. I hope we never have to fund another clinical trial or do another caregiver's support group because there won't be a need.